Oh, hey chatters. Uh, I've made this video a few times and I just, I was making it too serious. I, I don't feel like that's my personality. I, I want this to be more like a fireside chat, us just hanging out. But I do have something I want to chat about. I feel like we're in this age of information where we are completely overwhelmed by what is coming in. We can't process it the way we want to be able to process it. It's like our brain is full of traffic. <laughs> Everything's just backed up. There's too much going on. It's really difficult for us to sift through. So I've been given a lot of thought about this. And one of the amazing things about the technology that's been coming out for us is we can now build something new that will help us deal with all this information. And this is called a second brain. This is not something I've made up. It's making the rounds. It's getting out there. I want to talk to you a little bit about the importance of a second brain and how we're going to build one together. Just got to take some of my coffee. It's like 5.30 in the morning. Just imagine with me for a minute that you have one place to take all your notes, to put every article, to bookmark every little thing, every fleeting thought you can capture. This is a place where knowledge isn't just stored, but it's organized in a way that can reflect your personal journey and can be easily accessed no matter how disorganized you are. Think about that for a minute. Your next thought is probably that this is entirely science fiction. And I'm going to be honest, it is a little bit, but less than you probably think. We can now create tangible extensions of your mind and a tool that can grow with you, learn from you, and support you. We want to be able to take the deluge of information that we're all getting every day and channel it into something more meaningful, personal, and intimate. In this video, I want to build the case for building your second brain. Again, even though the technology isn't quite at the point where we can realize my full vision, don't worry. We're going to get there. We're on that path. In fact, whenever you're watching this video, we might already be there. So I'm hoping that I can convince you and that you're going to join me on this journey of building your second brain, which we're going to be doing in subsequent videos together. Now, this might sound like a lot, but I'm going to do my best to make this as accessible and engaging as possible because, again, it is going to be a lot of work and I want to make sure that you're along for the ride, whoever you are. Just to put this in perspective, for our journey together, what I'm going to be doing in these upcoming videos is building the next iteration of Professor Synapse. For those of you who don't know who Professor Synapse is, he is Synaptic Labs' AI avatar, you know, that little beaker that goes across all of our intro videos. And the idea behind him is to embody our values and really be an extension of us. And our values are listen, explore, accountability, respect, and lastly, but most importantly, to nurture or learn, the professor's purpose is to really not only embody these values, but in a way that we can align with you as the user, as the person, and help you achieve your goals. If you haven't already used the professor, I highly recommend you take him for a spin. You can check out the link in the description and give him a try. I sincerely hope throughout this series, you're gonna see how a second brain can be your ally in navigating the digital world enhancing your creativity, and helping you achieve your goals. Let's think about the vision here. Let's set the trajectory together so you understand how I'm thinking about this and where we're going together. It's been a wild year. We definitely stand on the brink or have already been pushed off of the brink of some serious monumental technological and societal changes due almost entirely to what I call generative large multimodal models. This comes from Tristan Harris and Asia Raskin's AI Dilemma video. 
I call these golems. So we got to think about knowledge differently due to all of these changes. The way we did things in the past just isn't going to work anymore. So we need to be building this second brain so that it's not just a library of knowledge. I mean, it's difficult to sift through that. Instead, we need to think about the knowledge as a conversational partner that is dynamic and aligned to us. So imagine with me for a moment that you have an intellectual dialogue with your digital or aspirational self, your AI avatar. These golems can sift through your second brain if organized appropriately and understand your interests, goals, and provide you with contextually rich responses that feel incredibly personal as opposed to maybe some of the vanilla things that you get out of a large language model nowadays. We want to set up curiosity as our compass. Really think about what intrinsically motivates us to explore new knowledge and follow our interests so we can be allowed to make personal discoveries that are driven by that motivation. So when we build our second brain, we got to steer by this compass, which means we're collecting information that sparks our interest, that challenges us, and that makes us question and wonder, maybe like we're kids again. Unlike the vast ocean of content shaped by algorithms and external influences, the purpose of your second brain will be a more curated collection of knowledge crafted by your own inquisitiveness. It's a treasure trove of what matters to you, shaped by the questions you ask and the answers you seek. It's this personal touch, this alignment with your individual curiosity that transforms your second brain into a powerful tool. It becomes a reflection of your intellectual identity distinct and rich with the nuances of your character and aspirations, rather than an identity sold to you by extractive algorithms. This probably sounds like some sort of fantasy to you, and maybe even your alarm bells are going off. Who's this snake oil salesman? What's the catch? There is a catch. It's gonna cost you the most valuable resource that you have, your time. But I can assure you that it's time well spent and definitely time better spent than flipping through TikToks or posting enraged comments on X. We're in an age where data is more valuable than gold. And privacy has become a vault that pretty much anyone can get into nowadays. So we need to think differently about securing our intellectual wealth. The second brain isn't really a repository or even a museum. It's a bastion of personal data sovereignty. Within the bounds of your second brain, we can protect it from prying eyes and just let people in that you want instead of the entire digital expanse. The idea here is that your curiosity is going to lead to collections of ideas and thoughts but not in a way that you are being surveilled. We're doing this in a way so that your data will serve you, not the highest bidder, if you're willing to put in the time. The idea I want you to wrap your head around is that we're going to be building a personal space that is yours and yours alone. Here, your digital footprints can form a map of knowledge that you control, that you navigate, and that you can share, but at your discretion. Think of it as a sanctuary for your intellectual pursuits, ensuring that your journey of discovery is both private and personal, enabling you to learn and grow on your own terms and not be driven by these algorithms that extract value from you. I want us to invest in our second brains, like we're planting the seeds for a future where our AI companions or avatars will flourish with us. These companions will become more than just assistants. They're going to become the caretakers of our digital gardens, helping to cultivate our intellects and enrich our human experiences. We're going to dive deeper into the how in upcoming videos using the tool Obsidian as the foundation for our second brain. 
so that we can construct our, and cultivate our digital gardens together. You can find the first video released alongside this one and get started right away. So I hope you'll join me in exploring how we can build these digital sanctuaries where our minds meet machines and we can develop these AI companions alongside us instead of to replace us. Thanks and I'll see you around.